Hi guys and welcome to A Dark Soul. Today we're gonna demystify why we should train a fearful dog force free. I'm Anita, I'm a professional dog trainer. I show you how to build a trusting relationship with your dog to overcome fear and reactivity and have a good time together again. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe and tell me in the comments if you have a fearful dog at the moment or if you're thinking about adopting a fearful dog, that would be very, very interesting to me. And I love to read those comments. And now stay tuned and have fun. All right, so what does force free mean? Force free describes a method or it's more like a lifestyle. When I'm working force free, it doesn't stop at sit, heal, whatever. It's a lifestyle choice. So I choose to work force free. That means that in day to day life, whenever I do something with my dog, whenever I address my dog, whenever I want something from him, whenever he does something and I have some kind of opinion about it, I choose a way that is let's say friendly it's like force free trainers decide to base their training on rewards on the one hand and that's also not enough to describe it so it's really a lot behind it because we have to consider the dog's needs we have to look at how we can improve the dog's life and quality of life and day-to-day -day activities and stuff like that and of course i'm speaking for myself so there are force free trainers who specialize for example in sports and maybe they won't look at the complete history and do a very very thorough questioning in the front of a consultation because the focus is not on behavior change but on another specialization for me i work with behavior change so i look at the whole life of the dog and choosing a force-free way includes the day-to-day -day conversations we have with our dogs especially when they do something we don't like because that's when it can happen that we react in a way that is not force free or we get angry that's very natural that's normal and angry responses would also not be force free by themselves so we have to be very careful we have to watch what we are doing we have to be aware of what we are doing and how we are behaving that's sometimes a lot more difficult than actually teaching the dog stuff but if we decide we want to work force free we also decide to really have a look at what we are doing because we choose not to intentionally punish the dog for something he does. And that includes everything that scares the dog or is painful for him. And the tricky part is that the dog decides what is a punishment and what's not, or what is force in his opinion some dogs are very tough and they don't get startled very easily and they are not scared easily so i won't say that we can be tougher with them but the unintentional things we do will not be perceived as badly by those dogs when we have a fearful dog and I'm just talking about fearful of humans, 
or very tense in general or very sensitive, they will perceive something we do a lot faster as threatening, scary, or forceful. So this is why we have to be a lot more careful with those dogs. And I would still choose to train my dogs, especially fearful dogs, force-free because they are already scared, they are already insecure and they already feel bad, especially when they have a fear of humans. And whenever we apply force, and that includes everything we have in the department of aversive tools, so prong collars, shock collars, slip leads, choke chains, choke whatever, <laughs> I mean, it's obvious that something that's called choke whatever isn't very nice. And all those things apply something uncomfortable or painful to the dog. And I'm not saying that it doesn't work. Yes, it works. But for a dog that doesn't trust us anyway, those things can really do a lot of harm. And it will not make the dog trust us more. And yes, it's possible to apply these things without the direct connection to the human. Because if the dog runs too far away from the human and he gets a shock from an e-collar, then he might not connect that with the human and see the human as a safe haven. But chances are very high that he will connect that painful experience with something else or with the environment in general. So we get a dog that is even more insecure. And while this might come along as very practical for us, because a dog that is scared of the environment will not run away very far from us, and I have such a dog, not because I did something, but because he's a very sick dog, the quality of life for this dog is diminished a lot. Imagine whenever you are outside or whenever you are doing something, there is a chance that you will receive some kind of painful shock, jerk, whatever. So whenever you do something, there is a chance that you will experience pain because of it. You will stop doing something. You will stop behaving as much as you can to avoid that pain. And if a dog is already fearful, it's even worse because that dog is already uncomfortable. And our job as caregivers, as handlers, as trainers, is to help that dog overcome his fears and have an increased quality of life. So we are the guardians. We have to provide safety. We have to get the dog to a point where he can enjoy life and where he can feel safe around us and safe in his environment and safe with whatever he's doing. And we can best achieve that with a force-free way to live with that dog. And yes, it's not always possible to avoid startling a dog, especially when it's a fearful dog, because they startle very easily. But when it happens to me, and I'm a kind of clumsy person, <laughs> so it does happen to me, I apologize to my dog and I give him a lot of something he likes just as an apology. Sometimes it doesn't work because he got startled so badly that he avoids the situation. It's very easy to see and I do feel bad about it but of course I can't just avoid everything that happens. Right? It's the same thing when something happens outside. 
because when a dog gets startled very easily and is very fearful, he could get startled by really tiny things. Like Sammy is getting startled a lot by insects. He hates insects and he freaks out when some insect is on him or around him. And of course, I can't do anything about that because they are just there and they are not really predictable, avoidable or trainable. So, and yes, insects are trainable, but not in the environment outside by me. <laughs> so I kind of have no chance of helping him with that, but to lessen the impact with something nice. So whenever he gets startled, he also gets something nice because we cannot worsen a fear response with rewards. It's not possible. And for me, it's also the more natural way to go and a nicer way to go. It's rewarding for us as well if, you, if we see that the dog is getting more comfortable, the dog is having a good time with us, he shows trust in us. So, for example, with my little terrier, she is fearful of humans, but she shows it in a very offensive way. <laughs> Let's call it that. So she um, would lunge and bark and growl and even snap at them when she gets a chance. And the humans are too close. Of course, we are training for that as well. But after living with me for a while, she developed a really nice trusting relationship with me and her idea was whenever we are in the woods or somewhere when she is not directly next to me but roaming around a little bit and she sees something before me she will either come back to me or wait for me and wait for what I decide and wait for what I tell her. So if I tell her that's okay and we go a different direction or we turn around or we even go past whatever she has seen, it's okay for her. And that's something that gives me a lot of joy and I know that she really trusts me in those situations. And all of that was achieved by force-free training. So I would always recommend going that path. And if that's something you would like to do, but you're not quite sure how to apply it to your specific situation, or you would like to try it for the first time with your current dog or with a new dog you're getting, Go to the description, book a free call. We see how I can help you and how to apply all of this to your specific situation, to your lifestyle and to your dog. And now I'm really excited to read those comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see each other next time. Have a lot of fun training your dog and conquer his fears. Bye.